peace and salutations, family, and welcome cast of the Digital Sanctuary, where we bring the word to you if you are unable to go and get a word in the name of Jesus. I am the Reverend Dr. Mark Carter Pierce, senior pastor and founder of all Christ's Love Ministries. And I thank God for you today for taking time out of your busy schedule to stop by and get a word from us. Amen. This is the second Sunday of the week of February 2024. Amen. We all know what that means. Yes, it's Super Bowl Sunday. I know it's about six o'clock. Amen. And I know that the coverage starts at 630. But kickoff isn't actually going to be till about 7 o'clock. Nonetheless, I'm going to do the best I can to hit it and quit it today. Really, really quick. We also stand on the precipice of Valentine's Day. Amen. That's right, fellas. Get those flowers. Get those, those uh, balloons. Amen. Make sure you get that card. Praise God. That box of chocolates, whatever the situation calls for. Uh, you know what you did the previous year, so make it right now. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Um, now is your time. And that's actually part of the message today, amen, which is going to come from the book of Romans, chapter 8. And I'm going to be reading verses 37 through 39. 37, 38, and 39, amen. Amen. Um, like I said, I'm doing my best real quick to hit it and quit it. Amen. I'll be reading from, if you're new to the channel and don't realize, I'll be reading from the New King James Version because that version is a true translation. It is the only one that is close to the original King James translation. And all it does is it takes out the old language and applies new. Instead of thee, thou, and doest, you get you, me, and does, but you still get the whole thrust of the what the writer is trying to say to you. Amen. Without further ado, <clears throat> let me digress and proceed with Romans chapter 8, verses 37, praise God, to 39. Wait a minute. Ah, here we are. Very good. And thus says the Lord. <clears throat> Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Blessed is the reading of the word of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask right here if you'd be so kind as to stand in the gap as I approach the throne of grace. Merciful God, again, I come before you in the name of Jesus, thanking and praising you for this day. Hallelujah. And all the gifts therein, as well as all the gifts bestowed to this thine servant, known and unknown, deserved and undeserved, and for one more opportunity to try to do something right in your sight in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray on this day that you will come forth with power and a testimony, and that you would open our hearts and minds to your divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and that the words that come forth today do not land on deaf ears, but rather be imbued in the hearts and the minds of the listeners, that we may be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would repair this your unworthy servant and broken vessel. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me, O God. Fix me right now, O God, that I might be found worthy by you, to be used by you in this time, this space, and this hour. 
for it's me, it's me, it's me who's standing in the need of prayer. As I give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise, it is in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we pray. Let all believers say amen in your respective places. Hallelujah. What Paul is saying here is an unquestionable fact that we need to understand. Paul is saying that in so many words, there is nothing in this world or beyond this world, nothing, no one, that can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ, through, uh, through Jesus Christ of God. This can be proven thereof. This can be proven. Because we need not but to look at one Jeremiah, verse 5. For I knew, for I knew you before I formed you in the womb, amen. Therefore, our spirits, what makes us alive, that spirit man, that soul, whatever you use to call it, belongs to God. And God sent Jesus Christ that we may be able to come back to him because we were born through shit, sin and shaped in iniquity. Amen. So God wants us to come back to him because he loves us. He created us. Don't you love things that you create? If you cook a good meal, don't you love it? Before, any go, before I go any further... I just want you to call out to somebody that may be in your proximity, a loved one who might benefit from this message. And in your most loving voice, say to them, the pastor is going to preach about. You can say it, it's all right. The pastor is going to preach about higher love. Amen. Higher love. Higher love is what we're talking about right now. That's what these verses of scripture talk about. Higher love. Not just your love for your job. Not just your love for your car. Not just your love for music. Amen. Not just love for your boo. Amen. Not just for love for your husband or wife. Amen. We're talking about an even higher love than all of those. Why? Because without that higher love, none of those loves are going to exist. But you need to know why. And that's why I'm going back to Paul again and what he was saying here, that he is persuaded. He has seen it for himself. He may not have walked with the other 12 apostles, but he learned through direct contact with Jesus Christ on the Damascus Road, thereby making him a witness of the resurrection of Christ. He knows the story. He knows the drill. He understands that Jesus is the road map. Amen. He gets it. And he's trying to tell us the same thing. I put a post on Facebook earlier today, and it's the God's honest truth. If Valentine's Day does not work out for you, God's love will never fail you. Hallelujah. It's the higher love. I have told so many people, amen, in the course of this life, and I teach this in our Bible school, and that undeniable fact is this praise God that undeniable fact is this that nothing nothing come between your relationship with your creator and you amen let nothing sister Diana let nothing come between your creator and you. Sister Dawn, don't let your job come between your relationship with your creator and you. Brother James, don't let a mountain of debt come between, and mind you, I want to, I want to illustrate, mind you, whether it's things that you love or things that burden you. Let none of them come between your relationship with your creator. None of it. 
Hallelujah. But I speak mostly of the things that we value because those are the things that tend to get in between. Amen. When we got money in our pocket, we don't think about God as much. When things are going good, we don't think about God as much. When we get a new job and more money, we don't think about God as much. When we get a new car, we don't think about God as much. When we get a new home or our first home, we don't think about God as much. When everything is going great, we don't think about God as much. As a matter of fact, God is like the police because the only time we think about him is when something bad happened. The only time you call a cop is when something bad happened. I haven't met anybody that called a cop to come to their son's graduation or called a cop to come and, and see their daughter's first child. We call on God in the bad times. But he see, here's the thing about that relationship, that first relationship, that higher love that has to occur between you and your Creator. Hallelujah. Because of that relationship, without that relationship, there can be nothing else. That job, that car, even your boo isn't there unless God allows it to happen. Amen. So God must come first. You aren't even here unless God allows it. Amen. And I'm not putting down the don't 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 make me a Valentine's hater today. Please don't do that because I believe in love, amen. I truly do, because God is love, by the way. God is love. Elohim is love. Praise God. That's not his literal translation. Translation, but he is love. The greatest, most powerful force in the universe is love. Love erases a multitude of sins. Love creates power. Have you ever noticed when that person that you love, when you find out they love you too, how, how powerful you feel? You feel like you could go out and pick up a mountain and move it yourself. It's because you can, because God does actually empower you, amen. Because he is love. But the thing that I want to put to you, which is why I made that statement about don't call me a hater, is this. The Bible says, where man will fail you, God will not. See, this is what's called an affair with a friend. As a matter of fact, you know, the, the, the marriage vow says, for sickness and health, for better or worse, till death do us part. This is why marriages today, 50% of marriages end in divorce today, sadly to say. Because when the going gets tough, the not so tough get going, man. That's right. You know, listen, if you lose your job and you lose your money and you lose your home and you lose your car, and nine times out of ten, I'm sorry to say it, but nine times out of ten, your woman going too. Or your husband going too. Because People don't want bad times. They got bad times on their own. What's that old saying? I can do bad by myself. But I want you to know here today that God will still be with you. Because if God before you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. He is not a fair well of friend. He's in for the long run. You are his baby. He created you. Even though you misbehave, even though you do bad things, even though you stick a fork in the socket, even though you peed on the floor, even though you wrote on the wall with a crayon, but God cleans it up eventually, he'll punish you for a little minute. Only a fool rebukes chastisement. The Bible says, do not be afraid to chastise your children. It will not kill them, but will surely save their lives. And I'll stop by to tell you today that God is that parent that will rebuke you for a little moment. But his reward is great. I'm reminded once again of the book of Job, where Job lost everything 
to endure a test of Satan and God allowed it to take place. But then when it was all said and done, God restored him tenfold. Everything he had, he got ten more of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Janelle, that's where somebody needs to say amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 you need to recognize he is the higher love. You see, on this planet, you know, some of you already know I have two dogs. The one thing about a dog is a dog loves you more than it loves itself. People can't have that committed, totally focused, unconditional love. But God does, amen. He even gives us every last opportunity to come home till you're on that deathbed, praise God. To repent and accept Jesus into, into your life. That's a higher love. On this Valentine's Day, I must confess that my wife left me 10 years ago. Things were rough, lost a house, lost a very, well, a, a, a part-time job that I had that was very, very lucrative, hallelujah. And uh, I had kind of shut down and wasn't responding. That's my fault. And when I shut down, she shut down, amen. Um, 35 years went away in the blink of an eye, praise God. But when that happened, and I went through my depression, amen, I had begun a self-destructive way of living, praise God, and uh, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for God's undying love for me because he knew I had to mourn. That's just how human beings are, and I did mourn. I went through pain, suffering, and gnashing of teeth, tears, and sadness in a matter of a year. But he pulled me through. He showed me his undying love, his unconditional love for everything that I did wrong. He started to bring me up and allow me to rise above, amen. Although I have infirmities in my body, my mind is as sharp as ever. And he has opened doors for me where now I have a home, amen, instead of an apartment. I have two vehicles, amen, that are paid for, praise God. I'm in law school right now to better myself and eventually better my community, amen. And I would not be able to do any of these things if it was not for the love of God. That's the message today. It's all about the love of God. While you're giving flowers and chocolates and balloons and diamond rings and gold jewelry to your loved one, you may want to consider giving God a Valentine's Day gift too because he gave his only begotten son so that those who believe in him shall not see death, which is destruction, the end, finito, fini, but life everlasting. And he didn't just give it for one person because he said he did not send his son into the world to destroy it, but to save it. That means everybody, you and me, praise God. So if it's not clear yet, let me make it simple for you and then I'll leave it as that. God is love and he is the higher love. So while you're crying over yesterday, while you're crying over your boo that left you for another woman, or your husband that left you to be somebody's wife, hallelujah, while you're crying about a lost job, when you're crying about a lost car, when you're crying about a lost home, when you're crying about lost money, 
I need you to know right now that God is still there and he'll always be there. And the Bible says all things work out for good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. But in order to benefit from the love of God, even though everybody does to a degree, but there's one way to assure it. The best way is to be part of his family. And it's a free gift that I can offer you today to be part of God's holy family, to be an heir with Christ. Hallelujah. You don't have to go anywhere special to do anything special. If you really want to do it, here's how. First, you have to worship in spirit and truth, meaning that I'm going to recite a prayer, which I'll have you repeat after me. And when I do, it has to be in truth. If you're looking for a quick fix, forget about it. But if you're ready to make that commitment to the higher love and the closer relationship, the, the closest and most important relationship you can ever have in your life, that being the one with your Creator. Then repeat these words after me in spirit and truth. Father, I confess that I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. But I confess my belief in Jesus. I believe he lived a life without sin and died on the cross for my sins. And even now, he is with the Father interceding on my behalf. Jesus, come into my life Come into my heart. Be my Lord, my Savior, my Master, and my friend. Holy Ghost, seal me until the day of redemption. In Jesus' name, amen. If you recited those words today for the first time in your life and did it in spirit and truth, let me be the first to welcome you to the family of God and the body of Christ. You are now, you are now a child of God and a co-heir with Jesus. Hallelujah. And subject to all the benefits therein. If you said those words today because you had left the church because you were treated unfairly, amen, but you felt something was missing in your life and you needed to get back in realignment with God, let me be the first to welcome you back to let you know that we love you and we missed you and we need you because there's so much work to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. Really quick before we go, I just want to put you down with one very, very simple fact. Something you may not know. There's one thing that God wants above anything else, and that's this. God wants us to love him as much as he loves us. That's that higher love, closest relationship we've been discussing. But I understand, listen, it's not like you could go take God, you know, out to dinner or... Netflix and chill. How do you do that with an omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent force? Amen? But there is a way to learn about him and to love him and to show that love in your living. And it's here. The word of God. But what you need, because you're a novice, you're, you're a baby in this, is the facts. Don't get mad. You need a Bible preaching and teacher that can verify everything with the truth of the Word of God. Therefore, I offer to you free of charge 
our Tema Bible School. We meet once every week via Zoom for about an hour, give or change, give or so, you know, give or, give or take, depending on the flow. Amen. And in that, we go scripture by scripture, we chop it up, we butter it to make it easier to digest. And I guarantee, because I offer little pieces of wisdom, amen, with this, to make you a Bible aficionado so that you can withstand the taunt of the devil, amen. And I guarantee you'll learn something you never knew before. I guarantee that on the first time you come, praise God. We meet via Zoom every Wednesday night at 5 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Mountain, 7 p.m. Central, or 8 p.m. Eastern. Again, we meet every Wednesday night via Zoom at 5 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Mountain, 7 p.m. Central, and 8 p.m. Eastern. I pray that I see you there. Remember, it's free. Praise God. I want to thank those who are watching now and those who are watching the future, amen, for taking time out of their busy day to get a word from God, amen, via us. Praise God. I'm wishing each and every one of you a happy Valentine's Day. Whether you have someone special in your life or not, I have some, I have a lot of friends, amen. I do not have a significant other, praise God, uh, at this time. But the way I'm looking at it is God is holding out somebody great for me. And my job is to wait and just let him pick that person because I fail at it. I'm not as smart as God. That's a fact. I'm not as smart as God. Praise God. Again, God bless you and each and every one of you. God bless your families. I am the Reverend Dr. Mark Carter Pierce, senior pastor and founder of All Christ's Love Ministries. Again, God bless you and be safe until we meet again.